Well, good morning. Let's go to Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the mighty, wonderful name of Jesus. The name is above every name. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus, that you gave us your only begotten Son. We thank you, Lord, for our salvation, deliverance, and redemption, protection, all that you bought and paid for and freely gave to us through Jesus Christ. We speak peace to our country. We decree and declare our nation is a righteous nation. We pray for our leaders, Lord. We thank they hearken unto you. We pray for the world, Lord, the nations of the world, that every nation has a gospel preached as a witness, then it should come. Lord, we pray you send laborers across their path, people's path. Each person has the opportunity to receive Jesus before they leave this earth. And Father God, I thank you, Lord, for all those missionaries out there. Thank you, Lord, for all those churches that preach the gospel. We thank you, Lord, we can be co-laborers together with Christ. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, for protecting them and meeting all their needs. And Lord, I pray that you anoint me today that I'm saying do what you have me saying do. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Okay, let's go over our Bible here to the book of Romans, please. And we'll start here in Romans chapter, uh, let's start in chapter 4. Now the scripture says here, verse 14, For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of no effect. And now when it read here in Romans chapter four, or 5, verse 19 says, for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. And then please, let's go to Romans, where we're in Romans. Let's read, read here from Romans chapter 10. Now begin at verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth these things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in heart, who shall ascend to heaven that is bring Christ down from above? Or who shall descend the deep that is bring up Christ again from the dead? But what saith it? The word is nigh thee in thy mouth, in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in the heart God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart man believe righteousness, and with the mouth confession made salvation. Now these scriptures here show us that faith speaks. Remember there in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, backs this up. In the Old Covenant, it was based on performance, man's performance. If they would do such and such things, for instance, keep the law, then the blessing of the Lord would come upon them. Their crops would be protected, their animals would be protected, their families would be protected, they themselves would be protected. But in our New Covenant, our righteousness is by faith. And one of the most important confessions you want to make as a believer, you know, this, of course, after you've received Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, is keep decreeing, declaring, I am the righteous of God in Christ. The more conscious we become that we're righteous or simply right with God because of what Jesus did, not what we did or didn't do. See, the enemy is known as the accuser of the brother in Rome and Revelation. The scripture teaches us in chapter 10, verse 9 and verse 10 and verse 11 and 12. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of testimony. Now, who are we overcoming? Jesus defeated the devil for us. So we exercise and keep that enforced by speaking God's word and decreeing and declaring that we're the righteous of God in Christ. And there in Revelation, that same chapter says that Satan is the accuser of the brother. You ever have somebody say to you or your own mind and you call yourself a Christian? It's always said after you did something, you made a mistake. You shouldn't have done it. So right away, the condemnation and guilt comes. But Romans chapter 8 lets us know that there's no condemnation that's in Christ Jesus. Condemnation is a killer. It will rob you of divine health and, and walk in the blessings of God. Because condemnation always condemns you and disqualifies you from receiving from God. And the good news of our gospel message that Jesus gave us is that simply that we don't have to perform to get God to bless us. We are the blessed. We start out blessed. Ephesians 1 verse 3 says we're blessed. And not only that, but Galatians chapter 3, verse 14 and verse 29, lets us know we're blessed with Abraham's blessing. So we got all the spiritual blessings, like the new birth, baptism the Holy Spirit, being led by the Holy Spirit, and we got all the tangible blessings. Jesus bought and paid for them and freely gave us to them, us. As when we receive Jesus Christ the Lord, we're an heir to Abraham's blessing. We're a joiner with Christ Jesus. But righteousness speaks. And it's so important that each believer know that the rights of God in Christ. Probably the most important teaching a person needs to receive once they receive Jesus, their Lord and Savior, is they need to be taught about who they are in Christ Jesus. And just devour scripture, so to speak, in those epistle letters. That's going to help build us up that we don't have that sense of unworthiness. 
Now, we never receive from God because of our worthiness or, or of our righteousness or by our conduct, by being good. No, that makes faith and, and grace of none effect, the Bible teaches in Galatians. So what we do is we go to God boldly because we're a child of God by Jesus being our Lord and Savior. And when you really need to believe Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, that you come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help time need, is when you've done wrong. When you really want to believe and need to believe that there's no condemnation is when you've done wrong. See, if you haven't done wrong, there'd be no condemnation coming to you. But when you've done wrong, that's the time to begin to create and declare, I am the righteous of God in Christ. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. And the more we say out of our mouth and speak that we are the righteous of God in Christ, the more confident we become at our position that we have in God, in Christ Jesus. It's easy for us to receive from God because we're not looking at ourselves. The accuser is always trying to get you to look at your performance, what you didn't do, what you did do. I mean, you didn't even go to church yesterday and you call yourself a Christian. I mean, people in the body of Christ use that to damage people, whether they realize it or not. You're doing everything you can to know who you are in Christ and trying to learn from God's word. And here comes somebody in the church parking lot walks up to you who was getting ready to get in their car and they couldn't just refrain from coming over you with their Bible and say, I just want you to know if you'll do this or do these three things, God will bless you. So they always try to get us over in performance. Well, thank God for doing things for the Lord. We should. But we're not doing this to get a position with God. Our position is with Jesus, in Jesus. We're seated at the right hand of God our Father with Jesus. As Jesus is, so are we in this world. That's why we're more than conquerors. That's why we're overcomers. And we need to decree and declare that we are the righteous of God in Christ. Righteousness speaks. That's the, the righteousness of faith in the new covenant speaks. That's how we release our authority, release our faith, is by speaking. We're told to speak. That's how we get, came into the kingdom of God, by receiving Jesus Christ the Lord, by confessing him as our Lord and Savior. So we don't dwell on what we've done or haven't, we do, haven't done. We don't get blessed because we read the Bible more than someone else or prayed more than someone else. And thank God for reading the Bible and thank God for praying. But the point is, we start out blessed. We have all the Father has. There's nothing like God's got left to give us if we'll behave him. He's already given us everything that he has when he gave us Jesus. He gave us healing, deliverance, redemption, prosperity, blessings, peace of mind, sound mind. All those benefits and blessings that Jesus bought and paid for belong to us. It's the blood of Jesus that qualifies us to receive from God. I mean, many times ministers say, you know, if you'll give tonight, God will bless you. Well, you know, we need to give. We should tithe and give. But the point is, we start out as blessed. We're not trying to get God to bless us if we give this $10,000. We simply do this unto the Lord, knowing that I am blessed, and I know in my heart I'm supposed to plant this seed, and I'm going to plant this seed in Jesus' name. Or if it's the last $2 a person has, whatever it is, they're doing it unto the Lord. So we're not trying to get God to bless us. Thank God for giving. <clears throat> Thank God for tithing. But we don't rob ourselves of blessing God if we didn't give or tithe. It already belongs to us. We tithe because we love the Lord. We give because we just simply want to be a blessing to people and help get the gospel out. And we claim a hundredfold return and believe God that the seeds we plant come back to us. We have more to give. But we always remind ourselves that I am the righteous of God in Christ. Let's just say this. I am the, go ahead. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And just keep talking that way. Say that many times during the day. So when you do make a mistake, you begin to say, first thing you want to say is, I'm the righteous of God in Christ. When you do sin, and we're not to sin, but you know, we've sinned more than we realize. Just, you know, hateful thoughts will come to us. You know, I had thoughts come to me yesterday about some guy. It was Sunday. Think how bad that is. But no, the point is, those thoughts need to be cast down. They don't need to be dwelled on. We need to forgive people. Got it. But in the midst of that, when the devil's bringing accusations, because remember, Satan's objective is he doesn't want you to know who you're in Christ. I mean, the, bigger than believing God for a new car, bigger than believing God for a new house, is believing that you are the righteous of God in Christ. I don't know of anything more important for a believer to believe than they are the righteous of God in Christ. And the more a person says, I am the righteous of God in Christ, I don't know about you, but I started saying that. I had no idea what the word righteousness meant. And I heard all kinds of preachers teach on the righteousness of God in Christ. 
I've been to seminar or get a set of CDs, you know, and they start talking about the righteousness of God in Christ. I thought, boy, here we go again. You know, I wouldn't say anything, but I'm thinking, I thought it was going to be something else. But no, what's God trying to do is teach us, give us revelation knowledge that we are right with him 24-7. When we're, if we sin, we're just as much righteous as the moment we got born again. In fact, as soon as a person receives Jesus Christ as Lord, they'll never become more righteous than they are right now. A believer will never become more righteous when they get to heaven they are right now. Because we read there yesterday in Romans chapter um, 4, excuse me, chapter 5, verse 15, 17, and 19. And we read today from Romans chapter 4. And we read there from Romans chapter 10 that we are the righteous of God in Christ. It's a free gift. We can't earn it. You see, don't tell us we have to do something to become right with God. And then tell us it's a free gift. If it's free, then you don't do anything to get it. Otherwise, it's not free. You paid for it. We can't do anything to become right with God. And you'd hear so many times in church services, you know, the Holy Spirit would move if we'd all get right with God. There's somebody in this church that's not right with God. There's somebody here that's hindering the Holy Spirit. I mean, it may not have been exact words, but it beat the people up. One time I went to this church to hear a friend of mine to preach, speak. And I got there late. And so the, the uh, worship team, I guess you'd call it, had the people that were late, or the ushers did, uh, I guess it was kind of their policy or whatever, to stand against the back wall of the sanctuary of the church. So no problem, you know. So I'm standing back there, apparently waiting for them to get to the next point that the rest of us that are late can sit down or be seated. So I'm standing back there, you know, and they were worshiping the Lord, had some slow songs going. And then finally this... Elder, whatever, got up and said, you know, with his head ducked down like he'd been beat up, and said, the, the Spirit of God is grieved today, just as you've le you left me on the cross, as they left me on the cross, so have you left me. And so what that did is, it just like took a fire hose and hosed down the whole congregation with condemnation and guilt. See, that was supposed to be the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, manifestation. But technically, and scripturally, when those gifts are in manifestation, they elevate the church. They edify, comfort, exhort. But so often people minister condemnation to the church, and condemnation kills. So we want to avoid all that in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, just knowing that we're the righteous of God in Christ. How are we going to know that? First of all, study the Word. That's good. Know in our mind that this is what God says is Word. But how are we going to get this in our life to be a real blessing to us? You know, the Bible said there in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Well, we're to seek all we can from God's Word to know about the righteousness of God in Christ. How's this going to help us? It gives us a, our mind renewed to God's Word that we're right standing with God. And you have to believe you're right standing with God when you made a mistake. When you acted and did something you shouldn't have said, said something to somebody you shouldn't have said, or pouted, or got angry, or got upset, or whatever it was. The first thing to do is say to yourself, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. You know, Jesus, would, he didn't come to condemn us, the Bible says in John chapter 3. I didn't come to condemn the world, that there was enough condemnation already. He came to relieve mankind. Jesus is our maculation, rock, how's that word go? He's our freedom, okay? So what we need to realize is that Jesus set us free. And when we receive Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we've, we've received all the Father has, whether we realize it or not. And when they caught the woman there in Matthew chapter 8 in adultery, and we're not supposed to commit adultery, okay, and we know we're against that. But the point is, he said to her, neither, neither I to condemn you. See, she was surrounded by condemners. Now, what was really torching her is the condemnation that these people are putting upon her. Like, those people have never done anything wrong. And so, one by one, their accusers left. Satan uses people to accuse you. So, when people get frustrated as Christians and don't know what to say, they, and are upset at you, they usually say, and you call yourself a Christian. And look what you did, or look what you didn't do. See, that ministers death. That ministers condemnation. We're not to judge our brothers and sisters. You know, Paul never wrote to the church in the epistle letters and said, you know, you should be ashamed of yourself. Look what you've been doing. You've been living in fornication. Now, God's going to get you from this. You call yourselves born-again Christians. Look how you're living. But he did say, why? No, you're not. That your body is the temple of the ghost. Why? No, you're not. He would remind them. He'd bring them back to who they are in Christ Jesus. The ministry of life is you bring the person to Christ and then teach them who they are in Christ Jesus. And the stronger a person is in the rights of God in Christ, the more confidence they'll have. Remember 1 Peter 2.24 says, Who his own self bear our sins, his own body on the tree. 
that we being dead to sins should live in our righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Now, in that verse of scripture, it's telling us to live on a righteousness. How are we going to receive healing and walk in divine health, knowing that we're righteous with the righteous of God in Christ? Not because we did something all of our life. See, this really can mess up some pastors, because I've, I've known them. I've, I've preached in a lot of churches to God be all the credit and the glory. But the point is, many times, you saw good-hearted ministers be beat up emotionally by the devil, by the congregation, or by people, or by certain individual people, or by the people that's on the board, or staff, or elders, or deacons, or because of whatever, you know. And they end up just like killing them. Many people lost their health because they didn't know they were the righteous of God in Christ. They were trying so hard to please God. Remember, Jesus told the story about one person, you know, he hired these servants, and some worked all day long, some worked part of the day, and then this one person just worked the last hour. And when it came time to pay him, Jesus distributed all the same amount. Now, the people working for the sun, uh, heat of the sun of the day, they got upset over this. They said, you know what? Well, you gave this guy, he just started working. You gave him the same amount of money you gave us. And Jesus said, did I give you what I told you I'd give you? Yeah, okay. What's well, mine to give away? Now, the problem is, look how upset they got. They worked hard. And they're looking at what they've done. And they're looking about someone who hardly did anything, and they got the same amount of I did. That's what Satan will do. He'll accuse you. Look what you've done. You, you didn't serve the Lord enough. Or... You've wasted your life. You went to Bible school, and what have you even done with it? You went to ministry, and what have you even done with it? You know, quit the ministry, or whatever, you know. Quit your marriage. Look what you, he just constantly bombards the person with, with that accusations. He's the accuser of the brother. That's what he does. He's always accusing you. He does it through your mind. He does it through your feelings. He'll do it through people. He'll do it through churches, as sad as that may be. Then what we do is we resist that. We can say, you know, what I did was wrong, but I am the righteous of God in Christ. Our righteousness is never hindered if we just believe that we are. There's no sin we can commit and righteousness will leave us. So help us out of sin, maybe some difficulty, we've got something in our life that we're trying to get the victory over that Jesus already bought and paid for and gave the victory to us. We need to keep declaring, declaring to that problem, that mountain, that demon, that devil, that situation, that sin, that mistake, and keep decreeing and declaring in the face of it, in the voice of it, in the feelings of that, and all those accusations, I am the righteous of God in Christ. I want you to say this all the time and keep building up beside yourself. Again, I started saying that sooner after I was born again, had no idea what I was saying. I just keep saying to myself, I'm the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus made us righteous. He made us right with God. We're just as right with God if we receive Christ as our Savior. We're just as right with God as Jesus is. God doesn't seem false in Jesus. So the old covenant is based on performance. And that old covenant was you did what God told you to do, and you get a blessing. A new covenant is not based on performance. It's based on faith in righteousness. And righteousness speaks and decrees and declares. So the more a believer says that they're the righteous of God in Christ, whether they realize what they're doing or not, whether they understand or not, the more they say that, the more confident they'll become. Because our faith in the new covenant is released by our mouth, by what we say. And we say we're the righteous of God in Christ. We build from that. So again, more important. Then confessing a new car. Thank God for new cars and everything, whatever a person is believing God for. Good. Praise the Lord. But more important than that, the greatest confession that I know of once a person has received Christ is to keep confessing that I'm the righteous of God in Christ. We read this in the scriptures that righteousness speaks. Not to say something is so wrong. And you want to keep decreeing about yourself that I am the righteous of God in Christ. Because it's the God condemnation, the accusations are going to come to you the rest of your life. They're always coming. And you just, you'd just be having a great day, and then someone texts you, emails you, sees you somewhere. You know what? I noticed you haven't been in church lately. I've just been grieved about this. And a lot of the people at church are, too. We just wonder, who's your covering? And it goes on. I and mean, you're just on aisle seven looking for the coffee and the Twinkies, and someone comes up to you. Now, I'm not saying rebuke that person. You have to follow your own heart. But at least underneath your breath, you need to say, Satan, I resist this in Jesus' name. There is no condemnation of in Christ Jesus. People so often use that to guilt people down and beat people up. Christians, born again, spirit-filled, putting people down. And again, I've seen pastors so messed up over it because they thought about all that the work they'd done for Jesus and all that they'd served with. And you know, brothers, I just need to talk to you after the service, and I've done this, and I've done Now, we've had discouragement come to all of us, but we resist it in Jesus' name. And, you know, people have left, and the church smaller than it's ever been. And what am I supposed to do? Well, 
What did God tell you to do? Well, I believe he told me to pastor. I believe he called me to preach or whatever it was, you know. I believe God told me to marry this man or marry this woman. But here we go with the but, you know. And I understand these are problems that come up. But what happened is Satan is bringing these accusations. Look what you've done. you worked all these years. You've always tithed. And where's your blessing? And that person got a new car. Never, never had to even tithe. Had this guy working for me. I had a secular job. I'm born again. And he started working for me. And he wasn't born again. And I felt in my heart I was supposed to hire him. And you know, if you hire employees, it, it, you know, that the devil can really talk to you about it. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm just barely paying the bills. And now I've got someone else on the payroll. Anyway, so this dear brother's name was Tom. And he got in and get born again, baptized in the Holy Spirit. And his, his uh, what do you call this, in-laws, or uh, mother and father-in-law, were atheists. He used to tell me about him, you know. And that they'd never been to church. Now, his wife, excuse me, they may have been to church, but his wife had never been to church. She's a real sharp lady. Seemed like, okay, you know. But anyway, so he got born again. Now, later on, his wife, she got born again. But anyway... He got born again. Now, a few months later, I'm not going to leave to go to Bible school. So he started going to church. And he's talking about Jesus to people. He was really into art and martial arts. And, you know, he would see his buddies that were in martial art and tell them about what Jesus has done for his life. And lo and behold, his wife got born again. His father-in-law, who didn't like him, who was an atheist, gave him a three or four family house. The, the title deed and everything, too, where we call those things. And... Since he's leaving me or I'm leaving him, I'm going to Bible school. A, a carpet store, tile store called him up and said, we want you to come work for us. And there have been a lot of people after him to get him. Now I'm leaving. He didn't have anything, you know, no, no obligation, nothing he did before. But the point is, and they said they brought him in, they talked to him, and they bought him a brand new van. Think about this company doing this. It's not that big of a company. And put the title in his name and gave him an X amount of dollars a week and plus perks and bonuses. Boy, I'll tell you something. Was I thrilled this happened? No. I'm thinking I've been born again. I've been tithing. I've been given. No one's ever bought me a van. I never had a, you know, I've had to fight every day to keep my job in Jesus' name, keep all the devils away and everything else trying to take it. See, what's happened is I'm starting looking at me. I've always done this. He just got in here. He, had, he doesn't even tithe. And look what God's done for him. Well, you see now, those thoughts will come to you. Either to condemn you or get yourself upset and jealousy and pride. You know, like they, Malachi, remember those people, God talked about them. You, you, you've said this, what, what prophets we serve God or, and the words tithe. So those thoughts come to all of us. Again, they need to be countered. They need to be spoken to. I resist it. I should have been rejoicing that he got a new van. New van, how about this full size one? And got this three or four family property just freely given. No connection, no ties. Freely given to him. And all the other things was coming to him. I just blessings were loading up on him. Just coming and, and manifesting his life. But I started looking at what I've done. And I've done this and I've done that. And I witness and I do this. And see, the devil came in there and camped out there for a while. Until, thank God for, for God. You know, the Holy Spirit won't bring up your faults. But he'll lead you to the word. And you get, you know, you'll be somewhere and someone preaching. And suddenly the Holy Spirit's talking to you about what, how you need to get rid of this. Well, I had to work on it. It took some, it took some time. Now, it shouldn't have. But it took a while for me to work on that jealousy and envy. See, we're told to rejoice with our brothers and sisters and weep with them that weep. But oh no, see, I wasn't real rejoice. I'm thinking about, I've always been doing this. I've always been, and I knew better to think this way, but I allowed it to creep in. And see, we always have to monitor our thinking in our mind. You can be having a great sunny day and all, the day ruined by all the thoughts that's going through your mind. That maybe the, the thing never happened anyway, or that what they didn't text me back, they didn't email me, they didn't call, they never responded to my email. Who do they think they are? And see, all day long, when you be joined the day, that thought keeps coming to you. And it'll stay there until we run it off. How are we going to run it off? One way is by just speaking to it, tell it to go. And if we've done wrong, we've made a mistake, then we need to say, in the midst of that mistake, and amidst the wrong we did, is that I am the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. I'm still right with God. No, no matter I did wrong, and we shouldn't do wrong, especially to people and to God. But the point is, we're going to make mistakes, and we need God to help us. Knowing who we are in Christ is the biggest help we're going to get. So as we read these epistle letters, we're admonished by God to speak about our covenant, that we are the righteous of God in Christ, that we're new creatures in Christ. Again, we may not have all the knowledge we'd like to have about it, we may have a lot of questions about it, but the more we decree and declare that we are the righteous of God in Christ. Let's just say it again. I am, together, I am 
the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now let's just say that throughout the day today, okay? Let's keep reminding ourselves that I am, praise God because of what Jesus did, not anything I've done. Thank God for us doing good things and serving the Lord, being blessed and having prayer meetings and, and passing out tracts, everything else we can do to get the gospel out. But, but we're not looking to that to get our blessing. We didn't go pass out tracts today, we're still blessed. And somebody else went out and passed out tracts today, they're not a better Christian than you are. So when the thought comes, you call yourself a Christian, and you'll have relatives and co-workers that sooner or later say, you know, you say you're born again, and you call yourself a Christian, and look what you did. Now, what we did, we shouldn't have. But see, accusations will come, and the reason it comes is from the enemy to condemn you. But Jesus never condemned anybody. He would remind them, like the Apostle Paul would about, we would today, about who we are in Christ Jesus. Jesus would just tell them, thy sins forgiven thee, rise to get out of bed and walk. This man's got to know he's been forgiven before he's going to get healed. I mean, Jesus has the divine healing power of God manifest in his life. This guy's not going to get healed, apparently, until he knows right away you're forgiven. And by him knowing that he's forgiven is going to help him receive from God. Know that you're forgiven. You're forgiven forever because of what Jesus did for you on the cross. He finished it for you. He's not waiting for you to get right with God. He just wants you to receive him as Lord and Savior. And when you do, you are right with God, just as much as Jesus is. That's the good news of the gospel. It's so good. It's hard for people that's been in religion to even believe it. That they all can't be that easy. Well, being born again is simple. All you do is confess your mouth. Jesus is Lord. And if we'll continually say with our mouth, I am the righteous of God in Christ Jesus, and block out anything but bring in guilt and condemnation. And avoid that in Jesus' name. Because what that does, it's the reason that came, is because Satan, the enemy, is using accusations to condemn you, to bring you down. And you want to resist immediately all condemnation, all guilt. And thank God, like Romans 8, verse 1, there's therefore now no condemnation, how much in Christ Jesus. So keep saying to yourself, I resist that condemnation in Jesus' name. Because of Jesus, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Because of Jesus, I'm the righteous of God in Christ. Because of Jesus, I have the mind of Christ. And begin to decree and declare what the word says about you. I will pray for you. Father God, I pray for my dear friend and viewer today. And Jesus, said, I thank you, Lord, that every one of their needs are met in abundance. The Holy Spirit dwells inside of them ever since they received Jesus, their Lord and Savior. And they're going forth, being led by the Holy Spirit with no guilt and condemnation. I thank you, Father God, that the body of Christ has the best jobs in Jesus' name. And we pray for all the people in the world that everyone to come and receive Jesus Christ, the Lord. Use us, Lord, to tell other, tell other people about Jesus. And we thank the Lord for all of our blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. There's people listen to you that would never listen to anybody else. Share with others what God's done for you and about what Jesus has done for you. And explain to them, there's a Jesse Rich out there that goes to church, but he's never received Jesus. And that's how people, when they came to me and talked about Jesus, even though I went to church, they planted those seeds. And someone else come on the water. You never know how God's going to turn this thing out. Till next time, this is Pastor Jesse Rich. Mind, we love it, and we're praying for you, and we do. And remember that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father.